good after morning. <laughs> so last night it was about 12:30, uh, 12:45, yeah, when I stopped working here in the off-grid garage. I, I thought about this polishing of aluminium and everything, and I said, well. I should actually Google it a little bit and to get my head around this machinery stuff I bought there in the hardware store. So I did some Googling and I sat in front of the computer until 1.30 or so and watched a couple of YouTube videos where people use this equipment to polish um, car rims and, and old uh, teapots and brass fittings from kitchens and stuff like this and they all got out there shiny and mirror-like surfaces and everything and I said wow that's incredible you know it all looks so easy when you watch a YouTube video and it's always perfect and optimal and the results are just stunning and then you go back in your own garage and it's all shit. it doesn't work at all you get the totally different result it's not working and frustration is maximum so it is now I don't know how anyway I've got them all up and polished now. They're all nice and shiny. Mirror-like surfaces. Unfortunately, the whole... Unfortunately, the plastic cases, they've got suffered a little bit from this polishing with a machine buff. But this is just on the black stuff here. You could have used some masking tape around it, but you know, how far do you go? These batteries will sit in this black box here, hidden in the corner somewhere for years. It's just not worth it, you know. Anyway, I've got only one battery left now. And this is the compound. This is not like a soap or, or a stone, whatever I said yesterday. This is called compound. And you get different compounds for different for different discs. And this is the soft wool loose disc, it's called or something. And the other one is the... Um, this is actually not hemp, this is sizzle. It's called sizzle. It's a yeah, it's almost the same material as hemp. But this is this is for rough cuts, you know. This is if you have scratches in your rim or something and you want to get them out. You use this um sizzle disc here and this plaque compound. This is like a wax type of thing. So it sticks to the wheel and then buffs out and smooths out all the scratches and and dents you have in your rim and this is the fine one the the white one i've used as well not working optimal it sticks here to the uh, to the um, actual disc here and look how worn this is now it's not really working well what i found is working well is toothpaste i i tried uh, car wax as well but uh, toothpaste is actually working pretty well and this is probably all the toothpaste which is now in the plastic here it makes a huge mess this toothpaste is flying around everywhere they are shit everywhere afterwards but it polished the it polished the um, the terminals pretty well look at this this is nice and polished yeah, who cares about yeah, who cares about some plastic which got a little bit of toothpaste on it, right? And some of them they've got really deep. <sighs> Look here at number 3. Look at this deep scratch there. This is like there's a piece of terminal missing. I don't know. Once you polish them, you can see all the little scratches and dents and marks in there. So Really, as an advice, if you get these batteries new here, don't touch the terminals at all. They are so sensitive. This aluminium is so soft. You have to be very, very careful on because I took bus bars off and on all the time to do some testing with them and you can see all the marks later on and it's very hard to get them out, if at all. You can feel it's a very rough surface from the sanding. So at the end I'm using a little bit of car wax here of car polish to get all the um, remains of the compound and toothpaste off and this makes the last final 
uh, treatment of the terminal here. So, so this is now nice and shiny, while the other one is still matte and rough. See, there's no shine in there. And some of these terminals, they take only a minute to polish down, while others take about six or seven minutes. It's so different. Okay, last one, last final polish. Nice. Mm, there is stuff everywhere. And you're also taking off tiny amounts of the corners of the bus bars and make them a little bit round. And this takes away surface area to the terminal. And I guess you do the same on the terminal itself as well. It's not really 100% straight anymore. You don't have any sharp edges anymore like before. The polishing and sanding and everything takes away the edge a little bit. And when you attach your bus bar, and the bus bar is a little bit round at the end from polishing, I think you are taking away tiny amounts of the surface area. I don't know if you actually gain anything by doing all this here. I'm very keen to... Uh, Please leave your comments down below <coughs> how to optimize this sanding and polishing process here for these battery cells. I get the impression I'm doing something completely wrong here. Totally... Um, it, it feels inappropriate to do that. So I'm keen to read all your feedback. What have you done to your terminals and bus bars? If anything at all. Enough talking to the camera. We have to put all these battery cells back in the box and put the bus bars back on. And don't forget our carbon crease in between. Just a tiny, just a tiny bit of this stuff here. Conductive crease. Just to fill out little gaps and scratches. Wow. I cannot wait to take the battery back in business here and to the inverter and then measure what kind of voltage drop I will have. Has it improved? Is it the same or is it even worse? <laughs> if it's really worse, I won't tell you. So I'm now using heaps of alcohol to uh, get over this whole battery thing here. <sighs> ah, I'm actually cleaning the contacts with that. So and afterwards I'm not touching them anymore. It's just to get the final fat and crease of it. They should be all fine. They're all nice and shiny. Look at this, huh? All nice and shiny. And I do the same with the bus bars. So where they touch the terminals, I'm not going to touch them anymore. So all the Z screws are now in place. I've just um, hand tightened them into the terminals and now I'm putting this uh, carbon crease onto the terminal contacts. So I have just uh, tightened my first nut here with this set screw so i'm using the uh, three millimeter allen key here to hold the set screw in place and then at the same time i'm using the 10 millimeter spanner here to tighten the nut and i just realized i've forgotten the spring washer underneath <laughs> oh it's a good start <laughs> Ah, now I can totally understand why people buy Battleborn batteries. <laughs> it is so much easier. <laughs> so, and now this is just the fun part here, because we've got the set screws in there. We can just drop the bus bars and they cannot move, they cannot swing, they cannot turn, nothing. You just top, pop them on and it's pretty safe to do. Just make sure you check the polarity again. 
<laughs> well, that's what I'm not telling you, I'm telling this myself. <laughs> I just need to be very mindful now building this battery back up again that I'm not getting too lazy and doing a bad mistake. So I put the camera aside and concentrate what I'm doing. And this is the washer size I bought there, yeah, M6 by 18, so 18 millimeters in diameter. And I bought them a little bit bigger because I just wanted to have a maximum pressure of the nut actually pushing down. So they are actually a bit bigger than the bus bar now, but it doesn't matter because we've got different bus bar sizes in here. They are perfect for these ones here and a little bit too wide for these narrow ones here. But yeah, that's the main reason I went with these larger penny style washers here. Just to give me more surface area to push down. Alright. So we are getting close now. We will do the last connection here. Come on, I can't see anything. There, we will do our 24 volt bridge connection now. And um, well, then we can reconnect the BMS and see if everything works. So hopefully, <laughs> BMS is flashing. That's good. So these are all tight everything is tight i checked the bms cables the balance leads three times i'm so glad i put numbers on there very helpful now first view after the refresh yay six millivolt oh shit come on camera there we go seven millivolt six millivolt deviation and all the cells are here looking good so far <laughs> oh my god and uh, here guys I must say this is probably yeah this is probably the most occupied the most occupied start at the moment uh, we've got a six millimeter ring terminal then we've got two ring terminals for the balance lead and for the shunt uh, washer, spring washer and the nut and you can see the um, the thread there yeah, the thread is only two or three that's maybe just one and a half two millimeters at the top here so 20 millimeter Scheiß camera so 20 millimeter grub screw is working fine but you can also go for 25 if you have bigger bus bars or if you want to double them up or if your ring terminals are thicker all kind of stuff you can easily go with 25 so far looking good alright so this is the first view at the uh, shunt so it still has got the history in here actually min battery voltage max battery voltage total discharges synchronizations so it doesn't delete the history what some people said. Okay, now I've connected it to the most positive terminal just over there. So it's permanently connected, not via the switch. So if you want to, you can actually connect it to the switch. So when you turn off your switch, your main switch, it will turn off the BMS as well. It doesn't matter, it will keep the history, at least in my one here. The only thing it loses is the state of charge but now it has to wait until we reach 54 volt or something to uh, recalibrate to 100%. Well, that's all good. Okay, so we are now... Reseating my board here with the BMS, smart chant and fuse. So we have to connect the um, solar array again, just temporarily to see if the battery charges and everything is alright and um, well 
then we can do the final step and snip the cable. All right, guys, this was the most terrible stuff I've ever done with this battery so far. Sanding and polishing these terminals, that is insane. I probably would not do this again. I would probably take very, very careful care of the terminals when I get more batteries. So I'm not scratching, I'm not scratching them and I'm not using the bus bars before I actually build the battery now. I, I really don't want to go through this pain again. It is insane. As always guys, thanks so much for sticking with me here in the off-grid garage. We've got 36 degrees and I'm going back in the pool now. You bet I'm going right now. Well, I guess then we shall see us again in the very last video when we cut the cable, connect our garage to the inverter here as the main energy source, as the only energy source and connect our battery with the thick cables here to the inverter, to the solar charge controller. And we are good to go. We are off grid. And then we are the off grid garage. And until then, stay charged, stay safe. And we shall see us again for the very last video here on the channel when we go off grid. See you then. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> oh, that is bad. That is bad. People will unsubscribe. <laughs> Well, until then, stay charged, stay safe, and we shall see us again in the next video very soon. Thanks again. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, that's better. <laughs> oh, I cannot say it's the last video. <laughs>